Um, hi, Councilman Martel. Uh, we would like to welcome you to Southampton Youth Bureau's Youth Advisory Committee. My name is Nicole and I am treasurer. Um, sadly, our secretary couldn't be here tonight, but we wanted to thank you for your time and being with us tonight. Before we start, we should tell you what the Youth Advisory Committee is. We also call it YAC for short. Uh, we would like to introduce you to Cami, who is our chair. Hello, Cami. How are you? Hi, Mr. Thank you, Nicole. Martel. Thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Cami, and I am chair for this committee. I would like to also introduce Dulce, who is the youth board liaison. And hey, Dulce. Unfortunately, my co-chair Ella couldn't make it tonight. So, um, the youth advisory committee, or YAC, is composed of students from across Southampton town. Presently, we have about 15 students on the committee attending in schools from Southampton, Hanson Bays to West Hampton Beach. YAC meets every other week where we plan community service activities and help plan events and programs for the town's youth bureau. Some of the things we have done this year has been to help senior citizens with yard cleanup and raking leaves. Um, we wrote thanking of you cards for people stuck at home due to COVID. We decorated Good Ground Park for the holidays and cleaned up litter along the canal in Hanson Bays during the East End cleanup. We know that you are responsible for arranging the East End cleanup, so we wanted to take this opportunity to ask you some questions if we can. Yeah, no worries at all. And thank you for everything you, you do. I actually follow you guys on social media all the time. I know Mr. Strecker puts everything out there for us, so I see it on a very regular basis. So happy to be here. Glad to have you. Thank you. All right. Um, so our first question is, what is the East End Cleanup? Okay. So I wish I could take credit for the East End Cleanup, but it actually started probably about 10 years ago. Uh, a couple of the council people at the time, Christine Scalara and Chris Nuzzi, had put it together. Christine has kind of fostered it for the last eight years, and I took over a little over a year ago. So basically what it is, it's uh, to organize everybody from Sagaponic to Eastport to go out on two particular days, collect the trash that they could find in their community, whether it be at the beach, on a tra hiking trail, you know, like you guys did underneath the canal bridges and along the sides of the canal. Wherever you feel comfortable, collect the garbage, bring it to the transfer station. You can uh, dump it for free, which is something you can't usually do. And it makes a great impression on our community that way. It's been a great event. I think last year alone, even with COVID, we had very small groups uh, and we had a few less people. We still had 22.89 tons and 27 tires of garbage to throw away last year. How much garbage has been cleaned up through this program? So over the 10 plus years, there's been 134 tons of garbage. Now, I don't know if we can picture that totally, but uh, it saves a lot of resources that we can have volunteers pick it up. It's a lot of garbage bags. I know I went around myself with my car and picked up some of the tires that people could not get to the beach, uh, get to the dump site. And uh, it's, you know, 134 tons is, is a lot of garbage. So we appreciate everybody's efforts. The Youth Bureau's Youth Advisory Committee has volunteered to clean up this year along the canal in Hampton Bays. Mm -hmm. We've chosen this area a couple of times and have found it pretty dirty every time. Where do you think all this garbage is coming from? Okay, so I'm a Hampton Bays guy and I fished along the canal and, you know, we partake in the restaurants in the area and all that. I really love that you guys are taking care of that area. Uh, you know, we have a maritime park going in between the CPI and the new development there. It's going to be a beautiful place for kids to come and adults with their young kids to come. Uh, the garbage is most likely several different things. We have boaters. We have fishermen. We have uh, people fishing on the banks. We do have, uh, we did have some homeless. I don't know if we still have that underneath the bridges. Um, and it's just a good collecting point because it is, it kind of ends up under the bridges, whether it be the train bridge or, um, you know, the highway, Route 27A. So it's just a, it's a multitude of different, different things that, that cause it to build up there. Hi. Um, as members of youth, we were wondering what else we could do to help this problem. So there's a lot of great things. I mean, reusable containers. Uh, we can bring our stuff in and out. You know, 
I kind of, a couple of council people were very happy to work with a couple young t-shirt designers. Uh, their company brand is Relic. And they started putting little baskets on the beaches uh, so that you can carry, if you take a dog for a walk or if you're taking a walk down to the beach, take a basket with you and bring back some garbage, throw it out and replace the basket. You know, that's the easiest thing to do. If you're just on a regular walk, you can do that. You know, we do have problems with, with strings and kites and balloons and stuff that washes up. We can't control what washes up, but we can certainly control what we as individuals bring off the beach and help with the garbage factor. It'd be great if you guys could pitch in with that. How can someone volunteer for this program? Do they have to wait for the annual East End cleanup to volunteer? So I don't think you should ever wait for the East End cleanup to come around. I think we should be volunteers year round. I think we really should anytime we go to a park, whether we go on a hiking trail, if you guys run cross country, if you do anything, anytime you're in Red Creek Park, Big Ground Park, any of the other parks in your neighborhood, pick up the garbage if you can, you know, throw it in the nearest garbage can receptacle, whatever. But if you do decide, you know, our cleanup is May 15th and 16th. And, and the benefit of, of joining that weekend is that you can get free garbage bags. You can bring uh, the garbage to the recycling center. We weigh it so we know exactly who has the most, who brings in the most. It's kind of a nice little competition. Um, and it is, um, you know, it's a great weekend. So if we could, if everybody could pitch in and, you know, that weekend's nice. It's, it's, everybody's out. You're going to cross, if you're, if you're doing the beach, which a lot of people do, you're going to cross paths with other people you know and friends you know and, you know, people were saying, oh, I didn't get here early enough. I didn't get to the garbage. I should have come earlier, you know. So please, that's a, it's a great thing. But if you do want to sign up, but just to add to that, you know, we do are signing everybody up on the website. It's uh, SouthamptonTownNY.gov and just look for the big banner. It's a big yellow trash can. You can't miss it. And uh, everybody can sign up. You sign up in your groups. And I'm putting together some little prizes this year, too. The Youth Bureau's Adversity Committee has hosted the Mariches Bay Project to educate us about pollutants in the water. They are an organization based in West Hampton where they create cages with oysters inside to help filter pollutants out of the water. Have you heard about this organization? Actually, yes. I've been supporting it for a number of years now. They have some nice fundraisers in West Hampton where, you know, you can come have a little bit to eat, but you can also see their projects. They put out these big fish tanks full of oysters and while the party is going, you can actually see that the water is becoming clean. So it's something that you, you know, it's a hands-on, you can definitely see it. I know for a fact, some great people involved, they've helped out with the uh, Cornell Cooperative at the Tyana Bay Station um, that has helped with Re uh, oyster farming. I'm, I'm going to guess, I would say in the last few years, they've probably planted a half a million oysters in that time. Uh, you know, they farm out, they get people to volunteer, they, they procure the oysters, they do get them out to community members. Um, I think they also do eel grass planting, which if you've never seen is very interesting. It sounds boring. It's like planting your lettuce in the backyard but it really makes a difference to your ecosystem that you have here. You know, we, we're all stewards of what we do here. So if we don't take care of the water now, you know, it's gonna be a much worse situation, you know, for, well, not maybe my kids, your kids down the road, you know, would be, so it's good that we keep up with that. Um, you know, uh, I believe it's five oysters can filter 250 gallons of water a day. So if you think it at times a half a million over seven years, it, it makes a big impact. So absolutely, I've heard of it. I would encourage everybody to volunteer if you could, but certainly follow them. They have uh, social media pages as well, and uh, you can keep up with what they do. Thank you for the question. Um, do you know of any other initiatives like this that have been taken in other parts of the township? So you mean as far as beach cleanups and all that? I think uh, the Surf Rider Foundation does one every year. The uh, I know the individual clubs. I've known the Boy Scouts have done it. 
you know, our key club, I know the Rotary Club in Southampton, there's been a number of groups that do it. Nobody on the scale of the town's uh, participation, but, um, you know, it doesn't take a lot. 10 people at a time, 15 people at a time. You know, if you play ball, get your ball team. If you're a dancer, get your dance troupe, whatever it takes, you know, spend a half a day. It's, it, it's, a, it's a good event. It's good, something nice to do together. And it really, like I said, makes an impact. Anything else you would like to recommend for keeping Southampton clean? Um, yeah, packaging. Try to buy stuff that has very little packaging on it because we're throwing away and we're filling out landfills like crazy. Uh, reusable containers, you know, we all had, and I'm at fault, I had my little water or juice bottle. You know, it's time that we all start using the reusable containers. Um, anything that cuts down on the amount of garbage, you know, the carbon gas is made, that it takes more oil to make a, a bottle, probably they can drive you down the block. So, you know, the best thing is to just be aware of what you're purchasing and, and just keep the garbage that comes from that to the minimum. Uh, you know, as you get older and you buy a house, there's renewable energy we have to worry about, whether it be battery storage or solar panels or wind, you know, the whole ecology of Eastern Long Island is changing. And we have to make sure that we protect what we have, you know, the waterways, our ecosystems, our wildlife, our marine life, they all have to be protected. Okay, um, our final question, are there any other environmental issues we should be aware of and do more to help improve? Okay, so uh, the town board right now is actually working on a balloon ban. Now it sounds horrible that we're gonna do away with helium balloons, but half of some of the uh, neighboring states have had that type of legislation. If you turn on the TV or if you have walked the beach, you will see what a balloon with a string can do to a sea turtle or to an eagle or to a hawk or any part of our wildlife, you know, could be ingested into a fish or a shark or, a, you know, it's, pre it's a pretty horrible death for them. And, you know, we need to protect, like I said, we're stewards of our marine life and, and our ecosystem. So we really need to stop putting things into the environment that can really harm, you know, our wildlife and our, our sea life. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Um, as far as what you're doing, you know, there's basic needs, you know, our dunes are, uh, you know, very fragile. So if you could stay off the dunes, if you can ride a bike more than you drive a car, if you can, you know, do any of the things that, you know, can keep us the air clean and, and our waterways clean, you know, that's, that's the future. Bits and pieces here and there, little steps at a time, and it'll be, uh, you know, a wonderful world we'll have. So actually, I just want to um, say, you know, that um, Southampton Town is, uh, we live in a beautiful place, and we're surrounded by water, and, um, you know, and there's a lot of uh, beauty out here. You know, the town has really taken a lot of effort, you know, to preserve that, which I think we all appreciate. Um, the town was one of the first to consider the plastic bag ban, weren't they? Even before right. Suffolk County and the state had um, considered that, which is, which is great. And it's good to be proud of. You know, I know the Southampton Sustainability Committee also, you know, meets often to discuss, um, you know, ways of reducing pollution and, as well, which is, which is great. So it's nice to be a part of the town and, you know, to be proud of that, you know, the efforts that we are taking and, and you as well. And thank you for all this information. It's, it's, it's Yeah, awesome. absolutely. You know, the straw ban was kind of started in Southampton town. We worked on that first. I know we all hate paper straws, but they're all better for the environment. And like you say, the sustainability committee, they have a wide range of efforts, everything from something as simple as a balloon ban, all the way up to the sustainability of how are we going to, you know, harness power down the road, whether it be wind turbines or solar or batteries. And if you ever get a chance to watch, you know, any of their meetings, it would be a, a great informational tool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so actually, one of the things that we want to do, too, and I know, um, so what we do with the Youth Advisory Committee is it's, uh, we promote a lot of it being youth-led, you know, which is mm -hmm. um, what they're doing this evening and doing a great job at that. So one of our students wanted to ask another question tonight um, as well. So Matt, did you want to ask your question? 
Yes. Um, is it possible that on major roadways we installed um wildlife bridges, which are little bridges above the roadways, so that animals can cross safely? Uh, being a guy that's probably hit a couple deers in my lifetime, I would love to be able to do that. Um, well, I've actually so every year we go to an association of towns meetings that are held in New York City. And one of the ones I did take this year was on similar path to that, you know, how do you protect your wildlife, fencing, we didn't talk as much about bridges, but I'm familiar with them. You know, I've seen them in Pennsylvania, they actually have them over roadways on golf courses, so you can go from one side to the other. So I, I understand what you're talking about, Matt, and I appreciate it. I don't know of anything coming down I know infrastructure is expensive and we're dealing with a shortage of properly paved roads and everything else. But, you know, it's something I will talk to the sustainability and committee about and I will uh, bring up to the board. Great idea, though. Do you have any place in particular you're thinking of? Well, no, no, I didn't. No. I was just thinking because I've seen multiple dead animals in the past couple of days. Yeah. And it led me to look further. The deer are definitely an issue, but I think one of the more horrific things are the turtle crossings. It's really hard to get turtles across the road fast enough. And, you know, we have a turtle center of the Hamptons who takes care of a lot of the injured turtles that, that come from the accidents on the roadway. I, you know, I wish there was tunnels or something we could do for them that would work. I don't know how we would get them to them or how it would work, but I love the idea. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Okay. So, guys, you can ask me any question you want. Shoot. <laughs> I think you did a great job at you know, answering our questions. So, we've really been focusing on you know a couple of things for this um, year for the uh, Youth Advisory Committee, mm -hmm. and one of them being um, diversity. You know, and then speaking about that across the township, in addition to you know environmental, um, like the East End cleanup and and keeping our environment clean. So um, we've had uh, speakers that came in and spoke to us about what we could do about diversity and also about, you know, keeping our environments clean. So um, I think like we've learned a lot, you know, since September had started. So, and Great. again, we appreciate your information too, as well. No, Did I appreciate anybody... being here. You know, I've worked with kids my whole life. I've coached, I've run the key clubs. I've done a lot of things over the years. My boys are a little older now, you know, they're 26 and 31. But you guys are the future. I appreciate that you guys are here. It shows a lot, a lot of, you know, great thinking and, and, and futuristic looking. And I appreciate that. So, you know, yeah. you guys are doing a great job. Well, thank you. And actually, you, you, what you just said reminded me, and uh, thank you for, uh, for the memory. Um, Dulce, Dulce is our liaison to our youth board. So the youth board, um, Dulce, why don't you explain what the youth board is? So the youth board is basically um, a board of like people that come together. They're mostly adults. Well, they're all adults except me. Um, and they we usually meet. We used to meet at the town hall and discuss like issues that are going on in our town that affect the youth and how to solve those issues. Um, last year, I think we really wanted to tackle mental wellness and how mm -hmm. to get those um, resources out to the people. Um, we also this year started focusing on uh, like food pantries and getting like little libraries. I don't know, like the small libraries like around um, the towns, but make them food drives mm -hmm. instead. Um, I've been told that you have one in Hampton Bays that you are a part of. Um, I don't know if you could share a little bit about it, just for yeah. One so. It's one of the, so just to keep in mind, I've been in office for a little over a year, worked in Hampton Bays on a lot of different small projects like that. So one of my thoughts, and it was reinforced by Bonnie Doyle, who came to me and said, hey, I'd really love to put a small pantry in Hampton Bays. And I said, well, that should be easy enough. Well, easy enough took about five months. But we finally had got the okay. So Bonnie Doyle, with the backing of the Hampton Bays Rotary Club, We'll be putting a little, what they, we call a little pantry in, if you know on Montauk Highway across from Scotto's by Guava, the little park that's there, you have the gazebo and then you walk towards Good Ground Park. And as soon as you get past the, the stone wall there, 
on the right hand side, we're putting a little pantry. So it'll have food, it'll have the availability of all non-perishables there for anybody who needs something, you know, a, a quick bite to eat. They can't go to the food pantry because it's the middle of the night or maybe they don't qualify for St. Rosalie's food pantry. They can grab a couple non-perishables. Nobody will see them really and go on their way. Uh, we've also tried to add a little box underneath it, which would also include gloves, a scarf, you know, something in the wintertime to keep them warm. You know, socks are so important for the homeless and that would, you know, be stored in this small box underneath. So it's it's pretty much built, it's painted. We're just waiting for the, the ground to unfreeze so we can, you know, actually put it in the ground. But you should see it, I would say around the 1st of April. That's so if great. you want to volunteer for that, you can, you can, talk to the Hampton Bay's Rotary Club. Yeah, we saw how difficult it was. Like we started at the beginning of the year discussing about the idea and um, we we thought this might take like a couple of months, like obviously, but not as much time as we've been spending on, but we got a donation from the Southampton uh, Kiwanis for material to build it. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna start building and deciding where we wanna have the locations, um, but. So there's two in West Hampton Village. We're the first one in Hampton Bays. We could always use the second one somewhere in Hampton Bays if you can find a spot. And then, you know, just work your way east from there. But uh, did you say the Southampton Kiwanis Club? Yeah, the Southampton Kiwanis um, okay. donated. Um, yeah, and we, we knew about the absence in like the Shinnecock area to Hampton Bays and a little bit of Southampton. So like mm -hmm. that's the area I think where we're going to target. Um, because nice. there's like minimum number or like none around here. Um, cause I live like by the Shinnecock area. So, um, I didn't know about the new one in Hampton Bays, but yeah. So the, the new one in Hampton Bays. So just to give you an idea, if you're going to go through the town, if you put it on somebody's property, you could probably do it a lot quicker. You put it on town property. We did have to go through legal to make sure if some, if the thing ever blew down and hurt somebody and, and so on and so forth. And then you have to find someone to steward it, someone who's actually going to take care of it. And then beyond that, we needed the Rotary Club to make sure that the finances would be in order because you don't want to build it. It runs out in two weeks and it never gets used again. So there was a lot of small hurdles we had to keep overcoming, um, but we finally did it. Now it's just the weather to get it into the ground. And, uh, you know, we'll have, we'll have a little bit of advertising out there for it. So maybe all you can, can stop by and take a peek and get an idea of what we're doing and help out with that. The Qantas Club is great. I've been a member for 40 plus years. From yeah, Southampton I've, Kiwanis, I've yeah. I've been part of the Southampton Key Club for about four or five years. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I know a little bit about that. But for also, you mentioned like a hat, scarf, glove drive. We mm -hmm. did one during the winter because the coat drive was taken by a Rotary Club. So we're like, let's do the next best, best thing, hat, gloves, and scarf drive. Um, and we got a lot of stuff. We donated all to the church, and they gave it out for like people in need as like a gift. Yeah, no, I think that's great. You know, the, the most overlooked item that uh, like Maureen's Haven out in the closest homeless shelter has is socks. You know, they go through socks. Socks are expensive. Anytime people can donate socks, you know, they're needed. You know, they, they may not wash them on a regular basis. They go through them like crazy. So, you know, the sock drive, the hat drive is, is a great thing. I appreciate you doing that. It's great. Thank you. Um, I, th I think that's, so, well, I just, I just wanted to add as well, Dulce, um, so what we've been doing, discussing as far as another food, um, mini food pantry, and I think that's what brought this conversation up, was actually have one here at the Flanders Community Center as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that would, and just as you said, you know, we needed to get uh, special approvals, which we did, so that is in the process of being done too. So hopefully that we could take care of um, the Flanders area at least. Well, and you, you have, have a lot of supporters. Have, yeah, the Blaze Church is right next door. I yes, know they yes. might be able to do something for you too if you don't want to put it on town property. But I think since we've heard, since we now have one on town property, it may be a little easier road ahead of you. So, yeah, we actually did um, get the approval for that, so it will be right here at the Planet Community okay. Center. And actually, Blaze Church is awesome. They've actually already said that they would support it and help us restock it as well. So they're, you know, they work together with us uh, pretty closely. No, that's great. Yeah. Awesome, awesome idea. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, great. And yes, as um, Dulce was saying, she is part of the Key Club. So when you mentioned that before, that's what <laughs> sparked me to remind my, remind my Dulce about uh, asking about the food pantries. So good, thank you. Uh, the Key Clubs um, and the React Clubs are a great introduction to community service. I mean, you can carry your K kids up through college if you want, you know. I joined my Southampton Qantas Club 18 months after I graduated from high school. So mm. that's a few decades ago. Yeah, there is no end to community service. Um, we we've have a lot of community service projects that we've been doing through the Youth Advisory Committee. But in, in addition to that, we also work together, you know, with the Key Club. It's like I know there's been some projects that um, we work with Dulce on with the Key Club from Southampton. Um, and as well as Hampton Bays, we work with them in the past too. So we, um, you know, there's a lot of community service out there. So Key Clubs and the Youth Advisory and, you know, just there's not very far to look to actually do that. Yeah, I know uh, twice a year, well, pre-COVID, we did twice a year uh, food basket assembly. We would buy, you know, a couple tons of food from uh, Sam's Club or BJ's, whatever was closest at the time. And uh, then we would have it at Skidmore's or at the school, and we would unwrap it and repack it. And we were feeding 350 families per holidays uh, wow. in Hampton Bays with that. Wow. So it's a great, you guys can jump in on that anytime. More hands to Mary. Yeah, great. <laughs> great. We will. That sounds like a great opportunity to take a part in. Yeah, we will. Um, okay, great. Mr. Martel, did you say that there were certain um, websites or social medias to, f to um, follow for these events? For the East End Cleanup, you can sign up on our website, or we, we do have a town uh, Facebook page not so much Instagram, that just keeps everything rolling up to date. That's where I see all your stuff all the time. Oh. Yeah, we're not quite that sad. You know, they're not doing TikTok. We're not doing Instagram, so. We'll be happy to share anything, too, that if you want to send it over to us, um, we'll, like I said, we'll be happy to post it for. I um, appreciate that, definitely. Yeah, no problem. If you ever need, you ever have a question or want to get in touch with me, my email is simple. It's rmartel, M-A-R-T-E-L, Again, at SouthamptonTownNY.gov. And uh, myself or my legislative aide May will answer you within the day. So anytime. Okay. I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you very much tonight. I see a couple of you dozing off there. I see that. That's, uh, <laughs> it's a little late. <laughs> yeah, all right. And guys. Nicole, did you want to um, Nicole, did you want to finish up? Um, yes. Thank you, Councilman Martel. We really appreciated your time and your answers to our questions. We hope this information will be helpful to many people out there because it will definitely be helpful to us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> so thank you. Okay. And you're always welcome to come back if you, uh, any other meeting. And, and, uh, no, I think anytime. Appreciate that. Great. Thank you. All right. Good night, guys. Good night.